Good morning, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Joe Lichtenberg. I am responsible for product marketing and industry marketing here at InterSystems. And I'm delighted to be presenting this webinar this morning that is entitled uh, Introducing InterSystems IRIS Data Platform. With me also today is Oren Wolf, who is in product management for data platforms here at InterSystems. And with that, we'd like to get right into the webinar. So before I get started, I'd like to provide a little bit of an introduction to our company, InterSystems. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, are existing customers and partners and how many of you are new to the company. InterSystems is a data management software company that has been uh, developing and delivering uh, data, data management uh, technology for almost 40 years. Uh, next year is the 40th anniversary of the introduction of our technology. And today what I'd like to do is talk about the next generation of our technology, a new uh, product that we're calling the InterSystems IRIS data platform. So as I mentioned, we've been at this for quite a while. And uh, during that time, we've been really focused on solving the, the same kinds of problems for our, our customers and our partners. We've been providing the enabling technology that allows them to build data-rich, intelligent, and mission critical applications spanning a, a wide variety of industries. And uh, the reason that I bring that up is the, what we're seeing today, the, the pace of innovation that we're seeing today from the marketplace is really faster than anything that we've ever seen in the past. And what you see on the screen are some of the key business drivers and requirements that we're seeing today from our, from our customers and our partners and the marketplace in general, including analysts and experts and innovators across different industries. One is applications need to be smarter today. Applications, the, the drive is to incorporate more and new kinds of analytics, things like machine learning, predictive modeling, big data analytics capabilities, things like uh, Apache Spark, and the ability to interactively and, and flexibly navigate and explore data through a variety of, of visualization tools and navigation tools. The second is there's a drive towards lower latency and for applications to be faster. Organizations in, in practically every industry are looking to capture the business benefits and the operational benefits that result from being able to shorten the delay between when an event or a transaction occurs and the, the insights that you can gain from that event and the ability to take intelligent programmatic actions and to be able to incorporate those intelligent data-driven actions into real-time business processes. Incorporating more data from, from more data so sources. So there's still this propon preponderance of disparate data we see companies are still struggling with data silos and application silos that are preventing them from being able to leverage an accurate single version of the truth. And simplicity, right? So, so at the same time, while there's this drive for more sophisticated applications that incorporate more data and more kinds of analytics, uh, People are, are looking to, to simplify and consolidate their, their stack, their tech stack. So these requirements seem to be at odds, right? Organizations want to be able to do more, but at the same time, they want to consolidate and they want fewer moving parts. The ability to work seamlessly with existing infrastructure. So, you know, the, there's a mandate now for open interoperability. The, the days of proprietary walled gardens are over. Companies. Uh, in all industries are looking to integrate their existing uh, legacy applications, their existing data sources, not only within their firewall, but the, the systems uh, of their business partners. And they also need to be able to create these seamless composite business processes that span their extended uh, enterprise and their extended ecosystem. Um, and in addition, any new technologies that they bring in, you know, there's a mandate that they have to play nicely in the sandbox. They have to integrate well into their existing technology investments. And then uh, finally, in terms of being able to scale and scale seamlessly on demand. So we all know data sizes are growing, workloads are increasing, 
and the, any underlying technology has to be able to scale to accommodate uh, this inc the increase in demand. And so one quick example, so, so one of our customers, uh, we have a footprint in, in practically you know, every industry and in the public sector. And one of our customers is a major uh, Wall Street uh, bank that uh, is currently processing 13% of the total worldwide equity trades. They're processing over 2 billion trades a day. They're generating 6 terabytes of new data every single day. And at the same time, they're, they're running uh, concurrent uh, uh, analytic queries, thousands of queries per second on the real-time transactional data. Um, and, and that's not sufficient. They need to scale to handle even more transactions. And they also want to include not just the real-time transactional data in their analytic queries, but they, they want to increase the amount of data that they're analyzing from essentially real-time and near real-time uh, transactional data to include six months of historical data in the analytics uh, along with the transactional data to eliminate the, the delays that they're seeing in the, in the intraday data warehouse and in their historical data warehouse. So, uh, so you know, we're, we're really seeing the need to be able to, to handle more data and more workloads and more users uh, coming from virtually uh, every industry uh, across our entire customer base. The other uh, primary trend that we're seeing today is today's applications need to be faster. And lowering latency isn't you know, about the, the performance for the sake of performance numbers. It, it's really about uh, being able to enjoy the business benefits and the operational benefits that can be gained by shortening the delay between events and insights and actions. Right? But it can be very difficult to make that happen. So the, the data that you see on the screen is data that was published by IDC, which is a, a top technology analyst firm. And so we commissioned uh, IDC to go out and do a survey of more than 500 enterprises uh, worldwide across all different industries. And here's what they found out. So the, the chart on the left tells us that more than 75% of those enterprises that were surveyed reported that the inability to analyze current live data was limiting their ability to execute on new business opportunities. And those are the, the kinds of things that the, the respondents came back with, you can see on the bar chart on the far right, and you can also see on the box on the bottom. And then the second uh, pie chart that you see is uh, the results uh, where the enterprises said more than 50% reported that uh, this lack of being able to analyze current live data was preventing them from being able to take advantage of operational efficiencies. Right? And what the, the research also told us, and by the way, this research is available uh, on our website if you would like to see all of the research. There's a lot of really interesting data in there. Some of the, some of the uh, data tells us that half of the companies are reporting that they have a delay of between five and seven days before they're able to analyze their transactional data. And 25% said it was taking as long as 14 days using ETL processing to move the data from their operational systems to their, to their data warehouse and their analytic environments. So, you know, this is important in terms of being able, able to understand what businesses are trying to do both from a, a standpoint of taking advantage of new business opportunities, <coughs> excuse me, business opportunities as well as being able to increase operational efficiencies by being able to shorten the latencies between uh, events and actions. So addressing this challenge is nothing new for InterSystems. We have always provided the underlying technology to be able to analyze and take uh, intelligent actions on real-time data and transactions in a single database uh, built on a, on a single unified architecture. And in our new product, we continue to innovate further to be able to do more and to further shorten the latencies between event and action. Another trend that we're seeing in the marketplace is the trend for simplicity. 
So organizations are looking to simplify their database management infrastructure. And so again, the same research from IDC uh, shows that most com companies are operating uh, at least five transactional databases and at least five different analytic databases in production. More than a quarter of the organizations have more than 10 of each type. And typically, each database requires one to two DBAs to manage it. So, you know, there's this, there's this current desire from organizations to be able to dissolve, to consolidate their database management stack, both for simplicity and bringing costs into line, as well as the ability to lower latency between the operational data and the ability to analyze it. So when, when analysts see a trend in the marketplace, right, they, they, uh, they like to jump on it. And no disrespect to analysts, that's their job, right? And when they, when they see a current trend, they, uh, they tend to jump on it and they also tend to make up their own uh, names or phrases for it. And that's exactly what's happening uh, here with the ability to consolidate, the ability to perform uh, transactions and analytics in one single database. IDC, the analyst firm, calls it analytic transactional processing. Gartner calls it HTAP, or hybrid transactional analytic processing. Forrester has a name for it. They call it Transalytics. So that's a pretty good uh, set of anecdotal data uh, that uh, for organizations that aren't looking at being able to do this and consolidate operational uh, and analytic uh, data management into a single platform, uh, it might be uh, you know, something that's, that's worth looking at. And so consolidation is happening not just at the database layer, but companies are looking to consolidate their entire tech stack. And with traditional approaches, there's you know, usually a lot of different technologies that are required to be able to, to develop uh, and deploy data-rich applications. So not only database management, but integration and uh, business process orchestration and data pipelining, different kinds of analytics and so on. And, and so just with database management consolidation, there's a desire for consolidation of the tech stack uh, that is required to build these kinds of applications. And so our goal here at InterSystems is to be able to provide uh, our customers and our partners with many of these underlying capabilities in a single, consistent, unified platform so that much of the required technology that you need, regardless of what your business requirements and your operational requirements are, it's already in the box. It's available to your engineering staff uh, with a consistent unified architecture and a consistent user experience. Right? And the other thing that we do is we also you know, recognize that it's a pretty heterogeneous uh, you know, technology landscape out there. And so we also strive to make our platform open so that it's easy to integrate other best of breed technologies into our platform as the business requirements dictate. Right. So this next slide, this is how we define a unified data platform. It's much more than a database. It's a platform that makes it faster and simpler to build innovative data rich applications that can incorporate data from multiple sources and make intelligent decisions and perform intelligent actions. So it requires the ability to manage both structured and unstructured data. So relational data, uh, non-relational data like object and document, uh, unstructured data like, uh, like text from free text fields and social media feeds and things like that. Uh, the ability to support both transactional workloads and analytic workloads and the ability to perform real-time and near real-time analytic processing on the transactional data as well as additional non-transactional data that's there for context to look for uh, deviation from patterns uh, and other relationships in real-time using the real-time data. It requires uh, a rich, sophisticated set of analytics capabilities, the ability to plug in uh, additional complementary technologies uh, where needed, and a full set of interoperability capabilities. Okay, And so with that, 
as an introduction about what we're hearing from our customers and our partners and the marketplace in general uh, and the, the business drivers, the key business drivers for the next evolution of our technology. Uh, here at InterSystems, we're very excited to announce our new technology, our, our new product, the InterSystems Iris Data Platform. And what we've done is we've taken the best of all of our technology that we've developed and evolved over almost 40 years of being at this, right? And we have incorporated the best into this new data platform. In addition, we've innovated in many key areas to increase the functionality and take the, the technology offering to the next level. So uh, you can uh, read this slide, but it co combines a transactional and analytic processing engine uh, that uh, works with all kinds of data, relational data, structured data, non-relational data uh, in uh, document format, in hierarchical format, in an object format, et cetera, textual data. Uh, uh, complete interoperability platform for connecting to various uh, applications, legacy applications, data sources, etc. And a rich set of analytics as well as an open analytics platform for being able to incorporate uh, learnings and data-driven decisions into your business processes. So a little bit about the name IRIS. So this is where the name IRIS originated. IRIS, which stands for Interoperable, Reliable, Intuitive, and Scalable, is the company's core design philosophy. It's guided you know, all of our uh, technology decisions um, really since the beginning. And our philosophy is that all software should be interoperable. Right? It's a very heterogeneous environment out there. It must be reliable. We've been powering mission-critical applications with you know, zero tolerance for failure uh, for decades. It needs to be intuitive, right? Now more than ever, uh, you know, in the Apple and Amazon and Uber uh, environment, uh, uh, customers and end users expect, uh, you know, an extremely, you know, intuitive speed of thought environment, uh, as well as uh, the developers that are creating the applications as well. And it must be scalable, it must be easy to, to scale up and scale out and scale back in on demand. And this IRIS philosophy is reflected in everything that we do as a company. So uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the key themes that uh, drove the uh, innovation in our new InterSystems IRIS data platform. So one is around simplicity. So we work hard to make it easy for fewer developers to develop these data-rich applications. And so we've combined all of our functionality, the multi-model database capabilities, the multi-workload capabilities, all of the interoperability capabilities, the, our analytics, the open analytics platform, into one unified, comprehensive data platform so that all of the capabilities are included in the box with a single unified architecture and a, and a single consistent UX. The second is around real time and high performance. So our software has always been used to power these real time mission critical applications. And, and with IRIS, we continue to further improve performance and shorten latencies. And just as an example, we're running InterSystems IRIS um, here internally in a test bed at uh, headquarters where we're able to process and commit transactions and then index them and make them available for analytic queries in tens of nanoseconds. So that's less than a microsecond to commit a transaction, index it, and make it available for an analytic query. And that's running on commercially available hardware. And, so, and we continue to uh, innovate uh, to take advantage of new hardware and to find ways to further uh, increase performance and, and bring down latencies. Interoperability and open analytics. So in our new product, we continue to innovate to make it even easier to integrate your existing applications and, uh, and data from different data sources. 
So in the product, we provide a full integration platform with application integration, data integration, transformation capabilities, uh, support for various standards, the ability to create uh, business processes, uh, business process orchestration, uh, and, and many more capabilities around interoperability. So you have a full uh, integration and interoperability platform built into the box that is residing you know, in the same underlying data architecture. And it's very close to the database, so everything that we do gets persisted to the database for example, for the support to support long-running asynchronous processes. If you want to report on any of the data associated with a process, even if the data is in flight, it's getting persisted to the database. Uh, and and the pl in terms of analytics, the platform includes uh, in the box uh, a range of analytics capabilities. So there's multi-dimensional business intelligence. They're analyzing structured data. There's natural language processing capabilities for identifying and extracting meaning and sentiment from unstructured text. Um, plus, as I mentioned earlier, it's an open analytics platform. So we want to make it easy for you to incorporate best of breed technologies into your applications and embed them into your, your business processes. So for example, if you have data scientists that are uh, running Apache Spark and machine learning libraries like MLlib, predictive analytics tools like SAS or SPSS or Netezza or R, uh, you can easily incorporate their learnings and their models into the intelligent applications that you build with InterSystems Iris. Uh, scalability, so the platform supports both vertical and horizontal scaling with lots of optimizations, uh, and it supports both transactional processing and high volume queries and the ability to scale both up and out. The platform itself is horizontally distributed, so we can take advantage of low-cost, horizontally distributed infrastructure. Uh, we support uh, horizontal computing, so we can push queries down to the data shards. So that allows you to keep a, a larger working set of the data in memory. You can analyze more data. You can analyze it faster at lower cost with less memory. Uh, all of the advantages of, of working in a horizontally distributed um, uh, commodity architecture. Uh, and all of our scaling capabilities, vertical and, and horizontal and distributed, are all seamless. They're transparent to the application code, so we make it easy for you to take advantage of that. And then finally, support for the cloud. So we provide flexible deployment options to allow you to support uh, cloud deployments, on-prem, uh, and hybrid cloud deployments. Our new InterSystems Cloud Manager provide simple one-click deployment to cloud environments, so commercial cloud environments like AWS and Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform. We provide support for, for containers and full support for Docker. Uh, and we also encourage our partners to create their own cloud offerings. So many of our business partners want to be able to create uh, and offer their own cloud offering as a service, and we provide full support for that. Uh, another uh, 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 well-used uh, architectural pattern is a hybrid deployment where our customers or partners will deploy on-prem, uh, but they uh, want the ability to spill over to the cloud dynamically as needed when the workloads spike and they need to spill over to uh, commercial cloud environments. Uh, so all of these capabilities that we're providing are in response to customer asks, and they're aligned with our customers and partners that are beginning to embrace a DevOps approach and continuous delivery, or CI, CD. Um, and so a lot of these requirements are coming from uh, those customers and partners. So we've had many of our customers and partners and tell, tell us that using our technology has allowed them to, to develop and deploy uh, applications uh, much faster, more easily, and maintain their applications more easily, uh, in large part through consolidation, by having all the functionality that they need available in a single unified platform. Uh, but recently, we decided that we wanted to put this to the test ourselves with uh, InterSystems Iris. So as an experiment, we commissioned two different development firms to build the identical data-rich application. One 
firm using InterSystems Iris, and the other firm using any open source technologies that they chose. And that second firm was very well versed in open source technologies, having used these for many, many development projects for their customers over the years. So it turns out that right next door to us in Cambridge, Massachusetts, there is a, a major well-known technology university, and they operate what they call a living labs project. And it aggregates more than 50 different sustainability projects, so green projects, from different parts of the, the campus and also from enterprises for things like solar farms and recycling initiatives and uh, wind power and carbon capture and so on. So the data from all of these 50 different projects, as you can imagine, varies tremendously because they were all developed independently. And so there's different projects that have different data and different silos. There's large volumes of research data. There's unstructured documents. There's structured data. There's live streaming sensor data from solar farms. So it's all over the board. So you know this seemed like a really good project uh, in terms of having a distributed and a diverse set of applications and data that we wanted to bring together into a single application. And we did a number of things to unify the data and the projects. One of the things that we did is we added the ability to rank all of the different projects against a consistent set of sustainability criteria to be able to aggregate and analyze and rank all of the data based on different factors and, and different criteria. So it, it turned out that you know, this was a, a good fit. It was also a really interesting project in terms of uh, green and, and sustainability that we are well aligned with here. So the two firms built out the, ident the identical application with different approaches, one using InterSystems Iris and one using open source technologies of their choice. And here are the results. So uh, you can see on the left the results from the open source initiative and on the right the results using InterSystems Iris. So the application built with InterSystems Iris required two and a half times fewer developers, required nine times fewer libraries, seven times less researching technology options, uh, more than three times fewer man hours, nine times less code, and almost 30 times less setup and config time. So this experiment, I think, really exemplifies the, the potential benefits of having all the functionality available in a single unified platform. And please keep in mind that this was a, a relatively straightforward application. Uh, larger projects, you know, such as the ones that most of our commercial customers and partners are, are building, uh, you know, typically will result in much greater absolute savings, both in, in time and, and resources. Okay, so um, very quickly, I just want to run through a, a few slides on uh, some of the, the key functionality in a little bit more detail. Uh, and then take you through a customer example, and then we can open it up for questions. So, um, so our multi-model, multi-workload database. Multi-model means support for multiple uh, different uh, object models like uh, structured, structured, relational, uh, non-relational, uh, and multi-workload uh, uh, refers to transactional as well as analytics. And so you can think of uh, this database as being essentially uh, the equivalent of six different kinds of uh, single purpose databases all built off a single unified architecture. Uh, so th this database uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know, really well uh, uh, purposed to handle con concurrent transactions and analytics at scale. And so we're able to be able to scale up uh, both transactional workloads and analytic workloads without disturbing the processing for either type. Uh, so it's independently scalable. There's built-in durability. So everything uh, that uh, uh, the database sees, every event, every transaction, is automatically persisted to the database. 
and that is, you know, unlike many special purpose databases that uh, rely on um, in memory only and scaling out memory uh, to handle greater loads. Um, and so as a result, it's highly reliable. And we've been powering mission critical applications in financial services, in healthcare, in uh, public safety and public sector, uh, and many other industries for decades. Right, so I, I wanted to give you uh, a, uh, a little bit of data around when we say real time what we mean. So the underlying database provides extremely fast performance for processing transactions and per performing real time queries at scale. So, uh, so you can see here on the slide, we're processing a single record transaction of 8K. Uh, we're processing the transaction in memory, creating a record, having it be accessible in memory, all with sub-microsecond performance. We're able to create a durable journal file entry in less than 20 microseconds on currently available commercial uh, hardware. And we automatically persist the transactions to the disk based on an interval that's configurable, configurable based either on uh, a time interval or on buffer size. Uh, and so again, this built-in durability provides the best of in-memory approaches with the durability guarantees of a traditional transactional database management system. And you know, these capabilities are critical for high throughput multi-workload applications in financial services, Internet of Things, and many other industries. The interoperability capabilities for uh, integrating with a wide range of applications and data sources, creating seamless composite business processes, they're all built in. It's, it's in the box. Uh, it's all part of a the single unified platform that is InterSystems Iris. Uh, it is built on the same unified architecture, and, and it uh, utilizes the same UX so that you don't need to hire and train a new set of developers when you need to connect to different data sources and legacy applications and to build uh, new composite business processes over existing legacy applications. And again, open analytics. So HTAP or fast data, uh, the ability to support uh, big data processing both within our uh, horizontally distributed uh, environment uh, but we also provide connectivity, for example, uh, to uh, big data uh, environments like Apache Spark. So we leverage the Apache Spark data sources uh, API, and we have a very high performance uh, parallel connectivity uh, to Apache uh, Spark so that you can leverage your existing data lakes uh, and leverage the, both the data and the learnings in applications that you build. <laughs> Business intelligence is in the box, the ability to leverage the work of your existing data scientists for predictive analytics and machine learning, and a full set of natural language processing capabilities, both for inferring meaning as well as sentiment. So it may not be enough to extract the meaning, but you also want to know is it negative, positive sentiment. It's all in the box. And we're seeing more and more of the ability to incorporate uh, intelligence from raw text fields and social media data to provide uh, more capabilities for uh, real-time intelligent applications. And finally, scalability. So we provide an array of scalability capabilities that can scale for different types of workloads, both transactional and analytic, for user concurrency, for growing data sets, and it's all transparent to the application. Uh, so you can uh, make optimal use of high-end hardware through our vertical scaling and the optimizations that we have built into the product uh, and to support larger and more varied workloads through affordable hardware with uh, horizontal scaling both at the application tier and through uh, sharding at the data tier. Okay, so a, a couple of more slides. Um, as, as I've mentioned previously, organizations in virtually every industry and throughout uh, various areas of government are using our technology to build applications that 
make smarter decisions um, using more data sets. Uh, so uh, we have a strong customer success in financial services, in logistics, where interoperability among a wide range of internal and external applications and data sources is key to make sure that the trains are running on time and the, the shipments are arriving on time and to understand if things are, are stuck in transit. Uh, that also is a, a big vertical where the use of IoT um, is rapidly growing. We are supporting IoT applications in a wide range of industries, including logistics, in retail, in government, in health, in healthcare, in discrete manufacturing. We're seeing uh, rapid adoption of IoT for all sorts of use cases, uh, but especially there's a lot of momentum around uh, uh, using real-time sensor data to predict failures rather than uh, a more uh, costly approach, which traditionally has been around uh, preventative maintenance. So being able to apply predictive maintenance techniques has all sorts of uh, financial and operational benefits uh, that it brings to, the, to our customers. Around utilities, other use cases in both discrete and process manufacturing, um, and in retail. So what I'd like to do with uh, the two or three minutes that I have left here is just take you through um, what I think is a, a really interesting example from one of our customers in financial services. So this first slide discusses their uh, current application. It's a uh, multi-workload or hybrid transactional analytic processing application that has been running in production for years. And intersystems uh, technology replaced um, what had previously been an in-memory database implementation that had reliability problems when the workload spiked. And the, the application itself uh, is a transaction management and analytics application. So it needs to process billions of orders, equity trades, every day. And at the same time, it's processing thousands of queries per second from 250 different applications. So there are all of these uh, analytic applications and dashboards that need real-time access to the data to understand, for example, did a, an order to buy 1,000 shares of IBM that was chunked up into lots of 50 and 100 shares. Uh, did that execute? Did it execute completely? At what price? Uh, and lots of additional information, right? So when uh, the inner systems technology was initially implemented based on performance problems and reliability problems with their existing in-memory database, uh, they uh, experienced a three to five times uh, improvement in throughput of transactions 10x increase in the performance or lowering of the latency of uh, processing the transactions, and a 75% reduction in operational costs. But probably more importantly, you know, it's critical for this financial services firms and, and any uh, financial services firm that is uh, processing transactions, right, to not slow down or have reliability problems or, or drop trades or go dark as unexpected volatility occurs in the marketplace, which happens from time to time. So, um, you know, most recently with the results of the, the uh, 2016 U.S. presidential election, transaction volume spike, right? So they have to have sufficient headroom uh, so that nothing bad happens, right? Or it can be really bad for the bank. They lose money, they lose customers, right? Just bad things happen. So in addition to all of these benefits, they've successfully handled all of the tra trading days um, and all of the attendant volatility since it was initially deployed years ago. So the reason that I bring this up is this customer has been an early adopter of uh, Inner Systems Iris. And they are uh, using the new technology to extend this existing application to handle more data and more queries. Uh, and so 
you, you can read through the, the bullets on the screen, but basically what they're doing is they are uh, including more of their data and more transactions in the existing uh, real-time transactional system. So um, currently they take the data and they move it to an intraday data warehouse and a historical data warehouse. And so their goal is to not have to maintain uh, multiple data warehouses. They want to run uh, more analytic queries on more data uh, on the transactional system. And so using InterSystems Iris, it, they are able to currently run up to seven days, 30 days, or six months of trade trading data along uh, with the real-time transactional data right, to eliminate the requirements of both the intraday and the historical data warehouse. So they not only get operational benefits, but they are getting uh, more data because they're eliminating the more information because they're eliminating the latencies associated uh, with uh, running these analyses where previously they had had uh, up to 30 to 60 minute latency and 24 hour latency. So there's all sorts of new intelligence and new services that they can offer to their customers and to their trading desks uh, by uh, running on inner systems iris and taking advantage of uh, the new capabilities and specifically uh, low latency uh, and the uh, additional scaling capabilities. Their initial results show 300% improvement in query performance, 70% uh, reduction in hardware, uh, in hardware and a lowering of overall costs. And I think the next step is we're going to switch to go on camera and uh, take any questions that we have. And I think, Oren, you have a number of questions for us. <laughs> Just a quick one, too. And uh, all I'll do, I hope, is uh, read them for you. Um, so the first one is um, regarding healthcare. Uh, what about healthcare? Are these capabilities available in your healthcare product? It's a, it's a great question, one that we hear very often. So in terms of timing, InterSystems Iris is currently in beta. Uh, and we are making it available to uh, early adopters and beta customers. The general availability, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the webinar, uh, will be in January of 2018. So InterSystems Iris uh, will be uh, commercially available in GA for all customers in January. Uh, our, uh, our plan is shortly thereafter to make these capabilities available in our various uh, health editions. So there will be a health edition uh, that takes advantage of the new capabilities that I've uh, described here that are in InterSystems Iris. And uh, that is slated to be released uh, in 2018, uh, sometime after the GA, the availability of InterSystems Iris. And the next one is um, regarding the product itself. Is it um, software only? Does it have um, specific hardware requirements? So um, as always, we are a, uh, a software uh, provider. So our, our technology is a software platform. It's a software product. Uh, we strive to be uh, uh, as uh, hardware agnostic as makes sense, both for on-prem and cloud deployments and VM uh, friendly and container friendly. There are uh, published uh, uh, hardware requirements, and I believe those are available on uh, learning services section of our website. Okay, the next one is how can I learn more about the analytics capabilities? So, great question. So, all of the capabilities are uh, documented and we have tutorials and videos and doc and a wide range of uh, learning materials where we really, you know, encourage you to please go and self-educate. Then all of that is available on the learning section of our website. So if you navigate to learning.intersystems.com, there is a wealth of material covering 
analytics and interoperability and cloud deployment and the database and the data models and the programming environment and everything um, that you could hopefully possibly want to self-educate. If you find that um, there is uh, something that you're looking for that you can't find, you know, clearly you can, you can search for it. We have, uh, you know, a search box in learning.intersystems.com, but send us an email because our, our learning services organization uh, works very hard to make sure that, uh, you know, anything that uh, our, our customers and our prospects and our partners uh, need to, to learn more and self-educate, they want to make sure that that's available to them. The next one, uh, I'll just read it as is. Um, is Iris a single data storage engine or is it multiple storage engines based on the underlying data structures that can be accessed via a single interface? This is a, a really important question and a really important differentiator for us. So we are not bolting together different databases that uh, you know, were, were built by different people. Uh, that is exactly not what we have. So you can think of our underlying database, as I've said earlier, as uh, being equivalent to as many as six different uh, kinds of single purpose databases, but it is one single database. So it was built from the ground up uh, as one database that supports both transactions and analytics in a single data model and multiple representations of the same superset of data. So we have a data represent, representation that we call a global, which is a master superset. And all of the representations of the data, whether it's relational or, or uh, document or object, et cetera, right, are all uh, essentially just views on that single canonical superset of data, so there's no object relational mapping, there's no conversions going on. So it's an extremely efficient and compact uh, representation of the data. So it's a single unified architecture uh, that is at the heart of InterSystems Iris and at the heart of our data platform. And those are all the pending questions we had. So again, thank you all very much for attending. I hope that you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you soon.